finally finishing this countless picture. There's my reference. Hi. Anyway, I put that out to the side while I'm drawing. It's kind of like off screen. So I'm laying down the flat colors with a paintbrush at 100% opacity. It's got slightly like blurred drawing edges. Um, I think I actually downloaded this online. I'll put the name of it if I can think of it. So anyway, every color that's touching a color um, that's not the same is on a different layer. I'm working right now in Adobe Photoshop uh, CS3. I think like halfway through the video I moved to CS4, I'm not sure. But anyway, right now I'm using the smudge tool. Uh, it's got a spattered brush, it's like the 35 pixel spattered brush and I use it at like 50% opacity. I'm just smudging out those lines of hair and now I'm laying down my slightly darker than the base color and smudging it out with that same splattered um, smudge brush. So good times. I seriously have been working on this picture for like months. Not literally like working on it, but it's been sitting on my desktop because my computer is kind of freaking out and not letting me make videos. So I had to clear up some space. Everything's good now. So um, hopefully there will be more to come soon. So anyway, back to what I'm doing. I am just simply laying down um, color and then blending it out. And I use this batter brush when I really want things to look kind of messy. Um, I generally use it all the time, but I blend it a lot less. Like, if you want a really clean, smooth blend, you want to use this spider brush in multiple directions and kind of like cross hatch with it. But if you just want it to look kind of like scratchy and brushed out, you just, you know, try to stay in the same direction. So, yikes! Those are some serious pink lips. But in my defense, his lips are really pink and the colors on top um, really bring down that color. When you're doing lips, um, you know, you can base it out with like a pink or a red or whatever, but use the skin color for highlights um, and to kind of layer that on top of it to bring that lip color down and make it more like it's part of the skin. Um, I use a little bit of purple on his lips too to kind of give him a bruise sort of look because, you know, he's supposed to be a vampire. As you saw, the reference that I'm using is of Kellen Lutz at some like random event in front of one of those board things so I had to like colonize him and switch the colors and play around with it so it's kind of touch and go. For teeth, um, never make straight lines in teeth. I say this all the time but you know I see it everywhere. If you make a hard straight black line in between your teeth it's going to look like they're Anna Paquin from True Blood or whatever so just don't do it. Um, onward to the nose. I started out making his nose look a little bulbous and you'll see that I kind of take it down a notch. It's good to like paint it out and sit back for a second and see what you got because right now it's looking a little fat on the end. So we just bring down that shading and try to make it part and cute. Kellen Lutz is a hard guy to get just because, I don't know, he's really like man pretty I suppose. I don't know, it's just in the dimples and all that stuff. It was really hard for me to get a likeness, but it's not too shabby. So now I'm doing um, the same thing to the eyebrows that I did the hair, blending it out with the smudge brush to make it look more like individual hairs. And I'm cutting in there with, you know, a little paintbrush and coloring the mole. If you're making moles on skin, make sure to add that little bit of highlight so it actually looks like it has dimension to it. So now I'm doing the eyes. Um, the reference picture had his, um, his left eye, his left, our right looking a little bigger, like his, his left eyebrow was slightly raised. So I started out trying to, you know, come close to that and then I wound up tweaking it to, to just make it look a little a little more right, in my opinion. One of them still kind of winds up looking bigger than the other, but hey, it's nature. No one's perfect, so whatever. I um, was using my sketch lines for some of the image, but I wanted to redraw the eyes, so I erased them off of that layer. And now I'm just throwing in a few eyelashes. Um, check it out. What I'm about to do to get the striations like in the eye and the detail, I got a picture of an eye that I cut out the circle and I'm going to overlay it. I'm putting a layer on top of it right there, overlay that layer, put a layer mask and blended it out. I know that was a little fast but I, I walked through um, the overlay process and the layer masking process in my Alice Cullen video so if you really want to know how to do that, it's toward the end I did it with her um, crochet jacket. But anyway, right now I'm doing his ear and I'm terrible at those but it's okay. I'm um, just playing around with the shape and just kind of flushing things out and using, I use the same smudge tool all the time. Um, it just gives it a little more of like an organic feel when you use this batter brush. Like if you're just using the round brush tool, it can look, I don't know, too blended. 
and I just tweaked the colors because I wasn't happy about it and now I'm using an overlay layer to kind of give his cheeks that pinkness, give his eyes um, a little bit of red. Okay, now I'm going in with a brush, a brush to do his pores. Um, I actually got this off Deviant Art. I'll put the name of the brush that up there, but it's really cool. I had set that pour layer um, to overlay and put a clipping mask on it and put it over the top of the skin. And I did, you know, over the darker areas, I used the darker spatter and then on the lighter areas and, you know, sporadically, I used the lighter one. It's pretty much, you know, all up to you, up to your discretion. I just, right there, I was just tweaking the hair. I found a plaster um, texture that I threw in the background and tweaked the color of it a little bit. I wasn't too happy about the shirt color, so I'm going to be screwing with that like for the next 20 minutes or whatever. So um, I eventually replaced the color of the shirt to blue and then I make the background blue, but you won't see that till the end. Um, I just overlaid a couple patterns over the top of the shirt and the sweater. Again, I show you how to do that whole process slower in detail in the Alice Cullen video at the end, so if you're kind of like, what the hell did she just do? Just check that one out, I really explain it. But I used just that tool that was just there with the warp tool. I'm just kind of tweaking the pattern to make it set over the sweater a little better, but um, I'm gonna blur it out, or not blur it out, but mask it out a little bit so it's not like, I don't know, right now it looks kind of like he's wearing a burlap sack, so whatever. Um, I'm just gonna go in and shave that out. <sighs> I'm trying to think of what else. There's that spattered brush tool again. I really sped this one up a lot. Um, all in all, it took me about four hours altogether. I sped it up to about um, like eight minutes. So, you know, we kind of zip through it. But I tell you, my whole process is comprised of the brush tool ranging from like 50% to 100% opacity and a, spl a spattered um, smudge tool and that's it so just brush and smudge brush and smudge you know whatever right now I'm doing a replace color um, like I told you I have every color separated on its own layer so I can replace the color for that shirt I just wasn't feeling like the red so I, I kind of switched up to a little blue because I like you know blue and brown complementary something like that so you know so now I'm just like tweaking the shading trying to get that to the right color and like I said, I made the background blue to make his face pop a little more. And that's it. If you want to see the finished product, you can check out my website. Thank you. Bye.